Hi everybody and this is Burke Lyle today. It is March 18th and we're about a week into our uh, sports lockdown period. Uh, Kevin Durant has the coronavirus but sports will not be played for a while but now it is time to get to the NFL um, uh, stories. A lot has happened in the last couple days. A lot of free agents have signed and later this week we'll probably give you a uh, maybe a bigger summary of who signed, but big news going on in the NFL yesterday. Tom Brady is no longer a New England Patriot, and he has taken his talent south to Tampa Bay, and he will join the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2020. Let me repeat that. Tom Brady is no longer a New England Patriot anymore. He is a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And for Patriots fans, I mean, just uh, how, how do you think this feels? I mean, this would be like if us in Washington lost someone like Alex Ovechkin. It would be that would be the equivalent. But it happened uh, yesterday, and look, about 48 hours ago, I was on 48 hours ago, and it appeared Brady was nowhere cl close to a deal with the Patriots at that given time. So now you move on, and look. 20 years, think about it, 20 years in New England. And there are multiple stories I want to share with you from what I've read. And he got there in 2000, at the turn of the century. You think about what the Patriots were when he got there. There's no Gillette Stadium. They played in Foxborough Stadium, which has long been torn down. And, again, six-round pick, they did not expect anything out of him. And, and the words he said to Mr. Kraft at the time, you have made the, this is the best decision this franchise will, will ever make. And it turns out that was the best decision that the Patriots uh, fan base could ever make. So now, here we are 20 years later. He leaves the team. So what I thought is why he left is, okay, I think he was just ready to move on. I mean, again, it had been 20 years since he got there. He's there for 20 years. He played for the same coach for 20 years. You'll never see that, and you'll probably never see that again, despite all the success. Sure, they went to nine Super Bowls and won six of them. But, just with, but with that, maybe you're bored of your current coach. I don't know. And, again, for years, this started with Jimmy G. The Patriots' plan was to replace Brady five years ago. At least that was Belichick's plan. And he wanted to do it for years and years. He wanted to have Jimmy G ready to play. And now, finally, you have your wish. You no longer have Tom Brady. So again, Belichick with everybody. He moved on from so many stars before, number one, their value declined. Or number two, when they were, um, before they declined. Or number two, before, hard to say, um, well, before they could get maximum value in a trade for them. He did it so many times, did it to Seymour, did it to Randy Moss. Well, that was before I did leave it. Let guys like Wes Welker go. The list goes on and on. Chandler Jones is a really good example from a, a few years ago. Right? So here we are now. It's Brady. And granted, Brady lasted 20 plus years. But again, for so many years, he took less money to stay with the Patriots since he knew that was the best place to win a Super Bowl. And at, and just again, they went to so many Super Bowls. They went to four Super Bowls in five years. And then last year, things finally started to decline. They lost in the first round. So is Brady leaving now? Is it possible when he went to the Bucks that Tampa Bay was the best place uh, for him to win? Better than New England. Certainly right now, he's, certainly the Bucks are offering more money for sure. I think they're offering over $30 million a year. I would think would be a two-year deal. So again, I think right now, here's two things. If you want to compare the Patriots and the Bucks, The Bucks have better offensive talent. Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, who both had over 1,000 yards receiving. And Mike Evans has been close to 1,500 yards and double-digit touchdowns in his career before, right? So he has better offensive support there. If you want to say the defensive sport, New England had the best defense in, in the NFL last year. Certainly in the first half, it looked historically great. Overall, it was. 
Tampa's defense was the worst in the NFL, so so that's certainly a work in progress. And again, he's not. You talk about how bad the line was. I mean, maybe Jameis plays differently, holds on the ball too long. I don't know, and very much more turnover prone. But as I said this uh, the other day. Wherever Brady goes, whether that's New England, San Diego, or not San Diego, the L.A. Chargers, or Tampa. The Bucs are going to be a playoff contender. I mean, you can go around the NFC South right now. The Saints, we know the Saints are the Saints. We know how good will Drew Brees be at age 41 next year. They had Teddy Bridgewater last year. They didn't miss a beat. At times, they were certainly the best team in the NFC. Had a tough first-round playoff loss. Atlanta, how good is Atlanta? We don't know. First half or second half Falcons, what are they? I don't know. So you have that to keep to consider. And then Carolina, what in the world is Carolina? I mean, sure, Teddy Bridgewater is now their quarterback. Breaking news, Carolina Panthers signed Teddy Bridgewater, right? That happened yesterday. So what are the Panthers? So the Bucks, I think, look, I think the Saints are favorites, but with Tom Brady, and you have to improve your defense. You need a better defense than that. Granted, there's years where the Patriots didn't have a very good defense. But you need, but with, the, with a better defense, you can be a, can be a wild card team. And I think they probably will, since you go up the NFC East, I think it's quite weak. I think it's only going to be the Cowboys or Eagles that have a shot to make it to the playoffs. Up north, probably Green Bay. Is Minnesota worse after losing Stephon Diggs going to the Bills? I don't know. And then you have the West. You have three playoff teams, maybe four, which I will get to that in my next video. I'll talk a lot about the NFC West and what the a move the Arizona Cardinals did. That's a teaser for you all, right? So, so that's what at. So you look at all those divisions, right? And the question is, can the South send two teams? Since now, as as what the old rules were, six teams were conference. Now it's seven. So are the Bucks a playoff team? I'm gonna say probably so. So this was kind of an introduction thing. So again, so I want to talk about this. This is from uh, Jeff Howe uh, of the Athletic. He wrote an outstanding article. I've read his work before. Since the Patriots have been in the news a lot. So, Brady did not receive the extension he wanted to in 2019. He wanted a multi-year extension. Instead, he got a $8 million raise, so that was to, so he got a raise last year, so he could be a free agent this year. Since he, I think he wanted to stay a Patriot for life, but the Patriots weren't interested in that and weren't interested in giving him more money. And again, I talked a lot about that just a few minutes ago. They, the Patriots, as an organization, Time and time again, Brady took less money. Since if you think about it, that, that, that turned out to pay big dividends uh, to this team since he took less money. Since, again, if he didn't take less money, is there a Stephon Gilmore there? Is there a – I mean, I think that's the biggest example. But, again, I th they'd be worse if Brady took less money. So he was trying to chase as many Super Bowls as possible, and he got three additional Super Bowl rings that many people did not think he was going to get. As his career went later and later, as he got into his mid to late 30s. And it has worked. So now, I think right now, and it wasn't all about money. I mean, I'm sure the Miami Dolphins or whoever, some of the really bad teams in the league could offer him the most money. But I think Tampa was the best situation. Go down to Florida, a whole new change of scenery, doing something new. Right? And obviously, Tampa is great for their marketing purposes. I thought anybody, especially someone like the Chargers or Tampa, this is great for marketing since ticket sales will increase. You think about jersey sales, there'll be a bunch of extra Brady Bucks jerseys now that there otherwise wouldn't have been. And people in Tampa have something to be excited about, something they haven't had since they won the Super Bowl almost 20 years ago, 18 years ago, next spring. Something that they hadn't had since when Jameis Winston was drafted, zero playoff appearances. This Tampa Bay fan base has had very little to cheer about in the last decade or so. And now they have something to cheer about. So, uh, Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, and I want to read some statements they said, uh, were very positive and thanked Tom Brady. So this is from Robert Kraft. Quote, How do I possibly sum up the depth of my gratitude to Tom Brady for what he's given us all these, these past 20 years of sadness, I know, I feel it's ending, Kraft said. I love Tom like a son, and I always will. Okay, 
So obviously, Kraft, I mean, you remember the story where Brady says it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Since, again, he, even Brady then, as a young 23, 22-year-old going on 23 in training camp 2000, knew that, I mean, I don't know how great he thought he'd be, but he knew he wanted to be the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Like, he didn't think, I'm just a six-round pick. Here I am, I hope I make the roster. And, I mean, since, again, there's many six-round picks that don't do it. So, again... Kraft has really enjoyed having Brady around. It's been 20 years. And, of course, you feel like you know it's ending. I feel how I know it's ending, right? It's hard to say because you think about 20 years and now it's over. And, sure, he knows Brady very well. They have a great relationship. They always have. They always will. Kraft may have decided to keep Brady around longer than maybe what Belichick would have wanted. That's a possibility and definitely a theory there. there. Quote, there simply will never be another Tom Brady. I look forward to the day we can come back and bring him home to New England to celebrate his Patriots career, his endless achievements, and his legacy as the greatest of all time. I love him very much. So, uh, similar to what his last statement was, and look, there will never be another Tom Brady. I think that is true. Will there ever be, number one, a quarterback that wins six or seven Super Bowls? I doubt it. And I think it might be possible, but it's going to be very, very hard to do. The dynasty that the New England Patriots were will be very hard to replicate. I don't think it will be done again. Right? And think about it. A six-round pick rising to what Brady has become. Since, again, many six-round picks are more likely to be cut than be have a decent NFL career, much less be a starter, much less be a pro bowler, much less be a Hall of Famer, much less be the best of the best. Right? And Tom Brady's a one of a kind. And yes, I think he will come back to New England after he plays a few years of the Bucks. I think they'll retire his number. They will have a special ceremony. It'll just, and it'll be Tom Brady Day in New England. That's going to happen. And I think at the end of the day, whether how much success he has with the Bucks, whether he wins a Super Bowl there in his two years there, I don't know. I don't know how many playoff games he'll play in Tampa. Even if it's a few, regardless of what happens in Tampa. Brady's going to be a Patriots legend. That's the way it's going to be, right? And this is from Bill Belichick, who normally doesn't say very much uh, or uh, is kind of interesting, but this is what uh, Belichick says. Quote, Tom was not just the player who bought into our program, Bill Belichick stated. He was one of its original creators. Tom lived, and uh, this is a little bit tricky word, uh, per... Uh, per Perpetuated, perpetuated our culture on a daily basis. He was a tone setter and a bar raiser. Uh, you know, I think that's exactly right from what Belichick says. said. You know, I agree with that. I couldn't agree with that uh, statement more. So what he is, is just someone who's set by example. You know, he really worked worked hard and that's just the way and that's just the way it was and nothing about his, his career with the Patriots as he said later on is going to change how spectacular it was yes he was so spectacular and yes he left the team but that doesn't change about how how great he is. And just, I think Brady led by example. He had a killer work ethic. He worked harder than anybody on the team or really anybody in the league, if you think about it. I mean, that's it's sort of like, you know Tom Brady reminds me of Kobe Bryant, someone who worked tirelessly at their craft to be great, to be the next great thing. And, they, and, and their hard work was rewarded with six, in Kobe's case, five championships. And by the way, Tom Brady's actually about a year older than Kobe Bryant is, believe it or not. Right, so, so that happened, and then, and then this is what, um, also what Belichick said. So they again, he says, Tom and I will always have a great relationship built on love, admiration, respect, and appreciation. Tom's success as a player and his character, as a person, are are exceptional. Uh, nothing about the end of uh, Tom Brady's career changes how uh, spectacular it was. So again, this is from this is from 
of, again, Bill Belichick. So, yes, they, they, I think they did have a good relationship for sure. I mean, it wasn't perfect, obviously. I think there was times where they disagreed. In, in the day, you're wondering who would last longer. It ended up being Belichick. So that's the way um, it was. And this is from Brady. Our team has all, always set a great standard in pro sports. I know it will continue to do uh, just that, Brady stated. Although my football journey will take place elsewhere, I appreciate everything that we've achieved, and I'm grateful for our incredible team achievements. Okay, team achievements. That is winning six Super Bowls and going to nine and making it to the playoffs. 17 out of 19 years that, that Brady was a starter, missed 2008. So there you go. He really, and again, they did set a great standard. That's absolutely right. I mean, you think about the Patriots. They are the standard of the NFL. They are even the standard of pro sports. Since you think of all the successful sports franchises in the last 20 years, NBA, NHL, even go to Major League Baseball. There's no MLB team even close to what the Patriots are. Maybe the Yankees in some way or another. Maybe the Red Sox. I don't know. Fellow Boston team in the NBA, you could say, you could argue it's possibly the Lakers, wherever LeBron James is. Right? In the NHL, it really is no team. Right? It is the Patriots. And that is and that is what they have been. They have set the bar high. And yes, Brady says, although it's a little disappointing, I... I will be playing elsewhere. I appreciate everything they have done on our team achievements. That's exactly right. So, again, I liked all the statements. I think they're all good statements, good quotes. Wherever they were, I think they really, I think what they said really summed up what their time was in New England. So, this is from Matt um, Chatham of The Athletic, who a former player wrote on the Patriots. Basically, wrote about uh, uh, Brady and his career since, again, he played with Brady in uh, New England in the early part of Brady's career and they won the first three Super Bowls. So, mentions the time at the practice field, yes. Brady at the practice field, really, I'm sure he was, he, he was very competitive on the practice field. You know, worked harder than everybody in practice. Right, talked about the experience as young players, yes. They talked about how they shared the same condo where they played video games together, did stuff off the field. Ate at the same dessert bars, yes. Talked about that kind of young Tom Brady, maybe before Brady was Brady. Since again, think about it. Tom Brady has really exploded in popularity in the last 20 years. And, and so have the Patriots. Sorry about that, I'm getting distracted since I'm outside. But they have both, both um, just really excel at organization like Tom Brady changed the Patriots. So did Bill Belichick. They both did. They both did. So, and then, called Brady a selfless teammate and mentioned the extremely older players. Just think about when Brady comes in the league, this is 2000. You have players that, ah, they're around 30, right? Early 30s. They were born, and when they won the first couple Super Bowls, they were born in the 1960s. So, yes, people that are in their early 30s are now in their early 50s now, right? And then, later in his career, like, think about who he's playing with um, late in his year, right? Late in his, you know, kind of the last couple of years, even when they won the recent Super Bowls. The young players they're with, they were born not only in the 1990s, but in the mid to the late 1990s. I think they really appreciate Tom Brady. So again, you're having, you're talking about guys he played with that are 30 years apart. So what could be fathers of current players or whatever, and sons of former players that he might have played with or against. So that's just Brady in New England right there. That sums it all up. The success, winning the Super Bowls, greatest athlete in Boston, in the Boston area, in sports history. You could say greatest NFL player ever, certainly greatest quarterback ever. You think about the success he had all in the regular season and in the playoffs. Winning three regular season MVP awards in 2007, 2010, and 2017. So now in Tampa Bay, we talked about that earlier. So Mike Evans, 67 receptions, 1,157 receiving yards, six touchdowns. Chris Godwin, 86 receptions, 1,333 receiving yards and nine touchdowns as options. So again, so talking about that earlier, who the Bucks have around, again, one reason why he might have gone is the Patriots didn't really have offense support around them. They knew they have to get it. We're in Tampa. I think he looked at the situation. 
and saw what he already had, that, that is another possibility. So that's why I went to Tampa. Wanted something new, thought there might have been a better team, at least offensively around him. And just decided it was time to move on from New England as a new coach. His coach would be Bruce Arians, who's an offensive, who's really one of the better offensive minds in the game. Has worked with so many great quarterbacks like Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, worked with Carson Palmer at the end of his career in Arizona. And now he'll be working with Tom Brady. So that will be interesting to see how that works out. So that is all on Tom Brady. Obviously, he's a Buccaneer. He has moved on from the Patriots. And that is no... And he, and it's decided to move on. So that's all we have on that. Next up, we'll talk DeAndre Hopkins getting traded to the Cardinals. Happened all within the last 48 hours.